Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee and this is New Angel Tarot. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing something really different uh, for this video. I've decided to break out of the mold and do some love readings. Now, love readings are really popular, so I thought I'll give it a go and see where you're all at at the moment, where the moon is, because the moon drives our emotions and also helps us with, you know, decision making on matters of the heart. So tomorrow we have a full moon, which is also a blue moon in Capricorn. Now, it's also conjunct with Pluto. Now, Pluto is the planet of power, but it's also the planet of transformation. So as an individual, if you are single and you are looking for love or you are looking to form a new relationship with somebody, the symbol of um, Pluto or the essence of Pluto is all about empowerment and transformation. So where is this sitting with you and what does this mean for you, depending on your rising sign? I'm a... Uh, an avid sort of follower of Western um, tropical zodiac astrology. So I use the Western system and I also use whole house, uh, whole sign zodiacs. So if you are a rising sign, this applies to you. If you are a sun sign, it also applies to you. And if you'd like to figure out where your Venus placement is as well, which is the planet of love, you can uh, follow those videos as well. I'm going to timestamp this video. It's going to be one you know, from end to end. I'm going to use the tarot, but I'm also going to refer to where the moon is sitting in your house. So at the moment, let's start from the top of the tree, which is your Aries sign. If you're an Aries, the moon is currently sitting in your 10th house. So the full moon uh, on Sunday is about transforma transforming um, not only your career, but also your legacy. Like, what are you known for in relationships? Are you known to drive the relationship? Are you known to be, um, you know, the decision maker? But what this is going to do is bring you a sense of power. Okay, and first and foremost in uh, your current situation, whether or not you're married, whether or not you're in dating or whether or not you're um, looking for love, this is about you driving a situation because, you know, Aries loves to lead, but essentially if it's not about leading, it's what you're known for, okay, your legacy in a relationship. Let's see what the tarot has to say and see if you have any messages about how you should decide on what you need to do moving forward if you're currently in one of those situations and see what the tarot has to say. Let's get into it. Angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides. What does Aries need to know when it comes to love and relationships in this blue moon? in Capricorn. 21st of July. What does Aries need to know? I'm just going to pull one card and we'll see what comes out. What does Aries need to know? Okay, so you've got the Eight of Swords. Now this is Mars in Gemini as a decan, but this is about you know, not paying attention to what other people are saying. You know, this might be something where at the moment you're stuck inside your head and you're re replaying a situation over and over inside your head. But now it's just time to take the blindfold off and really recognize things for what they truly are and um, make some decisions around that. Because sometimes when we just get stuck inside of our own head, it's what's known as analysis paralysis. So what you want to do, Aries, is obviously get to the heart of the matter, confront the issue or whatever the truths are, take the blindfold off and call it for what it really is. So tomorrow, release those, you know, circular thoughts, if you like, um, and start fresh because this is the time to transform. This is the time to really rise to the occasion and find out what you're really made of. Okay, so that's your card for Aries. I'm going to pop it back inside the deck. And then we're going to move into Taurus. So Taurus, the moon in Capricorn, this blue moon in Capricorn is going to be sitting in your ninth house. Now, this is also about transforming in terms of long distances, higher education and your wonder of the world. But the fact of the matter is, Taurus, you might actually be thinking what your beliefs and where they really lie right now. Like, what do you, you know, what do you believe in? What do you believe a true relationship to be? What do you believe true romance is really all about? So I'm going to pull you a card again and see what the tarot has to say. Angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides. What does Taurus need to know with this blue moon in the ninth house? Uh, educating yourself on, you know, things that you haven't maybe touched on before or also maybe traveling long distances to see somebody in relation to love. So that also is coming up as well for you, Taurus. 
What does Taurus need to know in terms of love? Okay, we've got two cards. I'm going to take the first one that came out, which is the High Priestess. So this is about using your intuition. What you want to do, Taurus, is use, follow your gut. Okay, if your gut is telling you something about a connection that is spot on, that you've known for a very long time, now's the time to take action on that. But it's also time to listen to your higher self. And this is about your gut instinct. Sometimes we want to test the universe and sort of go against the grain and not pay attention to what our true feelings are. Um, but I feel for you at the moment, Taurus, this is definitely something that you need to do. To, take note of and also look behind the curtain you know what I mean what's beyond the veil what are the things that are hidden from you that you can't see these are some of the things that you know might be answering some questions for you around um, you know if, if you are living you know far apart from somebody or you are um, you know having to travel a long distance to be with somebody this could be um, something here that you need to look further into or needs further exploration because sometimes if you're not in the room and you're not present, you're not really going to have the full story. So just make sure that you listen to your intuition and go with that this month uh, when the moon is in Capricorn on the first, 21st of um, July. So that's Taurus. Uh, the next we have Gemini and on the full moon in Gemini, you've got uh, the moon sitting in the eighth house. So the eighth house is all about sex, death and taxes, um, transformation and also, um, you know, intimacy. Uh, things that are generally ruled by Scorpio, but Gemini, you're going to be focusing on um, stuff that, you know, will transform you. Um, beneath the surface you know things might be bubbling underneath the surface for you right now that you're keeping uh, very private you might not be sharing your feelings with someone you might be actually keeping something under wraps um, because Scorpio energy is again is very secretive it doesn't reveal all its cards it doesn't really show uh, the reality of certain things it just likes to present a scenario or present a, a situation that in reality is very dif different behind closed doors so Gemini let's have a look at what's happening with you in the eighth house and see what tarot comes out for you angel spirits guides angel spirits guides what does gemini need to know that was pretty uh strong okay you've got the three of swords now these are lessons if you're in a relationship at the moment gemini you might be going through something that is uh heartbreaking you know it's tough things are, these are lessons this card is libra in saturn uh, sorry, Saturn in Libra. So when you've got Saturn in Libra, this is about testing things when it comes to marriages, relationships um, and connections. It can also indicate something here that's looming, which is not for you. OK, which means it's time to either move on or figure out if there is something happening that, you know, doesn't bring you joy anymore uh, this is time to actually bring those things to the surface because as i said that eighth house energy is also about shared resources um, as well whether they be shared resources um, with mortgages with you know who knows it could be anything but this here gemini i feel at the moment you're not quite happy okay you're not quite happy with certain things that are happening so maybe it's time to reassess those connections those relationships and see uh what's next for you because if you're not honest with yourself you're not going to make yourself happy so that's your card gemini saturn in libra lessons about the seventh house um libra is native to the second house the seventh house but the eighth house is what's bubbling underneath the surface right now so there could be something here that you need to pay attention to Cancer, the moon, uh, full moon in Capricorn is going to be sitting in your seventh house and this is the house of marriage. This is the house of adult relationships. So you may have been currently coming out of some, um, you know, some tough stuff, but you're now moving into the seventh house, which is something that you're thinking about potentially long term, um, you know, long term term relationships nothing that's sort of um, just skimming on the surface you're not interested in superficial relationships you're interested in relationships that are um, going to be something worth investing in and something that's mature something that is marriage material essentially let's have a look cancer in the seventh house and see what comes out in the tarot angel spirits guides angel spirits guides what does cancer need to know when it comes to love and relationships with this full moon in Capricorn. What does Cancer need to know? I hope you like my t-shirt. I just thought I'd have some fun. It's not supposed to be serious. <laughs> it's actually a play on a lot of things. So interpret it how you will. Okay. What does Cancer need to know? Okay. 
we have Venus in Virgo, right? This is feeling like you're sitting pretty right now, Cancer. This is your time to shine. This is a bit ability. You're waiting for the perfect, you know, match. You are a lady in waiting. You are someone here who's able to pick from the vine. You can take care of yourself. You don't need a man to take care of you. However, there is an energy here of attracting someone wealthy, maybe attracting somebody that you've been waiting for for a long time. Um, and it feels like this full moon in Capricorn is going to be a release of a very tough cycle and the start of something new. And to have this card as a love reading card, I think is very prosperous. Um, Venus in Virgo and Venus in any card is all about love, but it's also about what you're attracting into your life. And I think for some of you, Cancer, you're also attracting these things into your life because you're raising the bar you won't settle for less you won't uh you know just take anything because you know it's there um anything that's worth waiting for is worth the wait so cancer this is your card venus in virgo the nine of pentacles um enjoy yourself enjoy the journey um and don't forget you know don't settle for second best so that's your card for the full moon in cancer in uh, capricorn reading now, Leo, your focus for the moon in Capricorn is the sixth house. So the sixth house is the house of what you do on the daily. You know, what are, what is that looking like for you right now? Leo, you might be busy with your head down in work at the moment because work and routine, it's health and wealth. So you might be focusing on that at the moment and not really focusing on relationships as much um, because when we're busy and we're forging ahead with career or busy at work, we might not have time to go out on dates. We might not have time to meet the right person. But let's see what the tarot has to say because it is about your daily routine and if there's any messages here that might be of use. So angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides. What does Leo need to go know for this full moon in Capricorn? This blue moon, once in a blue moon opportunity. What does Leo need to know with this full moon? Okay, we've got two cards here. The first card that came out is Taurus. So there could be a Taurus in your life, or this is essentially a card of marriage. This is someone here who's also very traditional. So I think, uh, Leo, as well, if you are looking for a relationship or looking for love, you know, you're looking for something here that involves marriage or is essentially a marriage um, that, you know, that's bound. You're um, not breaking from this uh, this partnership, this traditional um, ceremony, this uh moral compass you know when you make a, a, a connection with somebody um, marriage is supposed to be for life and um, whether that be in this life or another life it is eternal interestingly enough though the other card that did come out is that ten of cups this is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow this is actually knowing exactly what you want out of higher relationships and connections that supersede the earth you know um, Taurus here is an earth sign and so when you're superseding the earth, when you're actually rising above and transcending past the material, past anything that is superficial, um, you're always going to be wealthy. You will always be in love. The idea of love, maybe, but your routine here is what you're going to be focusing on. And if you are um, busy with work or busy with, you know, something that's keeping you occupied during the day, I think that's going to be your pathway to success, um, focusing on the daily and your health and wealth, because if you're healthy, you'll always be wealthy. Virgo. Uh, Virgo, this full moon in Capricorn is going to be a focus on your fifth house. And the fifth house is about children, but it's also about uh, desire. And what you enjoy doing so this full moon in capricorn could be something like time to actually enjoy yourself time to actually um not work so hard you're coming um you know out of that sixth house energy but you also might be what wanting to um you know just take some time out to enjoy some entertainment um spend time with friends uh, that sort of thing. Fifth house is all about the good times and desire. So you might also be focusing your attention on, um, you know, someone desirable, potentially someone who's Leo, because the fifth house is traditionally Leo as well. Um, but let's see what the cards have to say for you, Virgo, and who you might be seeing at the moment. If there's a message here for you, let's see what the tarot has to say. Angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides. What does Virgo need to know about the full moon in Capricorn? Okay, you've got the moon here, as in the moon card, and you've also got perfected work. So I feel like there's something here um, that you're, you know, it's in shadow. You you can't see the results of, at the moment, but they're coming. So there's something here in shadow that's happening behind the scenes, but eventually this is a card of marriage. This is also a card of connection, connecting with others or connecting with 
your partner if you are married and perfecting what you're here to do right now in this full moon. Capricorn uh, full moon as well is obviously something around money and around materialism. So you also might be uh, in a situation where you're actually, you know, staying low, uh, working behind the scenes here as well to put something back into the home, uh, put something back into the relationship to build something together for the future. Um, so if you are seeing someone at the moment who is working all the time and you all you want to do is go out and have a good time, this is about perfecting something behind the scenes. So I hope that makes sense to you, Virgo. That's your quick reading for the full moon in Capricorn. Um, Libra. Uh, the full moon in Capricorn is going to be in your fourth house. The fourth house is about uh, the maternal, being a mother, uh, home improvements, anything to do with being at home, feeling safe uh, and secure. Now, the full moon is in Capricorn, but that fourth house energy is generally like a Cancerian energy. And the fact that we are, um, you know, the moon is opposite uh, Cancer, is its opposite sign is Capricorn. Um, I feel really strongly here that you might be, you know, coming out of a home sort of situation where you felt trapped for a while and now now it's time to actually enjoy, um, you know, what you've put into the home, whether it be, um, you know, enjoying some meals, enjoying home improvements, enjoying um, the safety and the sanctuary of your home. You may have also just recently started a job that you're now working remotely so you can actually work from home. So that's also a bonus. But let's see what's coming through here, Libra, in terms of the Cancerian energy, um, because you might also have been in contact with a Cancer recently that can provide you with a feeling of safety, security um, and love and that maternal kind of, you know, pull. So let's see what the cards have to say for Libra. Angel Spirits, guys, what does Libra need to know in terms of love, in terms of uh, the full moon in Capricorn? What's reaching its peak? What are we releasing here, Libra, in the fourth house? What are we releasing in the fourth house? And this is also about transforming. Okay, so we do have um, Saturn in Pisces, and then we also have here the Moon in Cancer, which is the fourth cup. I feel like here you may have also been wanting to leave a relationship, Libra. You may have been contemplating the grass is greener. You may have been contemplating something here for a while. And this transformative moon in Capricorn, which is conjunct Pluto, might be the time now where it is you've been meditating under this tree for some time and now you're actually going to be pursuing other things. So if you are in a marriage or a relationship, um, it's now about pursuing what you really want and breaking out the mold, transforming yourself and following your own intuition, following the moon. You know, this is moon in Cancer, but also this is the moon featured on the Saturn in Pisces. Saturn in Pisces are lessons about your creativity, lessons that, you know, you've learned about, you know, being too idealistic about relationships. So I hope that was helpful, uh, Libra. Next, we have Scorpio. Now, Scorpio, the moon in full moon in Capricorn is going to be sitting in the third house. And this is about the friend zone. Um, you may be in a relationship at the moment where um, the relationship is no longer romantic. It may be um, going into that Gemini energy of the third house. And the third house energy is Gemini. So the Gemini energy is always about the buddy system. It's not really too deeply connected anymore. It could be something here that you've just reach, reached that point in a relationship that you are just now friends um, and no longer, you know, you know, either sexual or um, romantic connection. But we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to pull you some tarot. So let's have a look at Scorpio and see what the full moon in Capricorn has in store for Scorpios. Angel spirits guides, angel spirits guides. What does Scorpio need to know about love on the full moon in Capricorn? Full moon in Capricorn. What does Scorpio need to know? Okay, we had two come out here. The first one, which was upright, is walking away. This is Saturn in Pisces. You did have a second one come out as well, so I'll take that too. This is uh, the Knight of Wands. This is an Aries energy, putting yourself first. Okay, so this is no longer being in a position of control or power. This is about you following your dreams, following your intuition, and really turning your back on things that don't serve you anymore. You know, these cups have all been filled. You know, there's sort of nothing more to experience um, or learn or um, potentially 
filling your own cup. You know, these is, this is kind of done and dusted. And I feel as well, you may have also been walking away from somebody here who is quite controlling, somebody here who has been in control of you for some time. Um, so that's your reading, Scorpio. I hope you enjoyed it. Next, we have Sagittarius. Sagittarius, the full moon in Capricorn, is going to be sitting in your second house. Sagittarians, you might be focusing on a relationship here at the moment that ha needs to have value. You need to have someone or find someone here who actually has some finance behind them, you know, some savings, things that are of value to you as well. Maybe you might be looking for someone here who has the same values as you, someone who has shares the same beliefs as you do. So that's another uh, aspect of the second house. But let's see what the tarot has to say in this full moon in Capricorn for Sagittarius. Oh, that last one. Angel spirits, guides. Okay, this wants to come out. No, no, I'm not going to take it. Actually, I'm not going to take it. Angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides. What does Sagittarius need to know about the second house with this full moon in Capricorn? What does Sagittarius need to know? Okay, so we've got a few here. We've got the Ten of Cups. We also have the Five of Wands. And then we also have the Four of Cups. So it feels here, you know, you do have some ideals, ideas about, um, you know, wanting to be uh, in the perfect relationship. But at the moment, you're maybe in a team environment or working with other people or being in a situation where it's combative. And all you want to do is be back at home or be closer to home or be in a situation where the grass is greener. OK, so your ideal is not necessarily coming to fruition right now because you're surrounded by the wrong people. OK, you might need to change up your social situation, your work life, um, something that can bring you closer to home, something that can bring you more joy and something that can take you, um, you know, toward a, a better chance of meeting someone or even a better relationship with the relationship that you currently have because at the moment it feels a little bit um he said she said energy and also the fact that you're surrounded by people who are very distracted and they're not um you know you're not able to focus on a current relationship so Sage, have a think about that and let me know what you think in the comments um and that's your tarot reading for the full moon in capricorn now, Capricorn, this is all about your first house. So first house being the moon is in your house. Um, it's about putting yourself first. OK, this is no longer, um, you know, making concessions for other people. Oh, that's OK. You go first. That's all right. I'll figure that out later. This is number one for you on Sunday. Sunday, you are putting your hat into the ring and you are saying, I'm not taking second best. I'm only going to put uh, myself first and actually accept the best um, because if you don't keep the best um, in, and chuck out the rest uh, you're not going to get exactly what you're looking for so you know I mean there is a bit of energy there where you might want to compromise um, you know nobody's perfect um, but essentially at the moment until you find that you know quote unquote perfect it's important to put yourself first so the self is the ego is the first house and that full moon in Capricorn is all about you so let's see where you're at right now if you are in a relationship or where, where this next tarot card could take you in terms of some food for thought okay angel spirits guides angel spirits guides what does Capricorn need to know about relationships in the first house what does Capricorn need to know about relationships in the first house. Okay, you have the Eight of Swords. Now, this is analysis paralysis. It's also Jupiter in Gemini. Jupiter is also in Gemini at the moment. So it's about ex the expanding of ideas and situations. But with the card itself, Jupiter is actually in detriment in Gemini, which uh, is the opposite side to Sagittarius, which is why it's in detriment. Um, but basically, you know, you might be replaying a situation about a person or a partnership or someone you've been dating recently over and over inside your head let it go this is a card of just saying take the blindfold off just look at the reality of what it is and be able to move on you know these uh, love readings can also indicate friendships and work relationships as well I don't really want to sort of just pinpoint um, 
romantic relationships because you might not be in a romantic relationship this could just be a connection here that you have with someone at the moment who it's doing your head in um so it's about just putting yourself first and saying look this is what i'm okay with this is not what i'm okay with and then you'll be able to get some clarity on the situation because jupiter in gemini is an implosion it's you know everything that's inside your mind that's going round and round but you're actually not getting any resolution so i feel here really strongly that um just take the blind fold off look at the reality of a situation and try not to get overwhelmed okay Capricorn that's your first house reading for relationships uh, next we have Aquarius and this is sitting in your 12th house so Aquarius you're going to be right at home here uh, socializing this month this is also about relationships when it comes to more than one person okay so you're going to have to juggle multiple relationships on this full moon and you're going to have to learn from these relationships when it comes to actually tackling different personalities different expectations different um you know whether they be family work or romantic um it's also about you know just stepping out and staying true to yourself but also at the same time you know you're not able to work just one-on-one -on -one. this is a collective situation at the moment you might actually be dating multiple people um so let's see what the tarot has to say aquarius if you're not dating anyone at the moment this just could be a nod to actually start getting out and socializing okay because the 12th house is you know um not just about socializing but you know your spiritual side like getting in touch with how you want to connect with um, different people in different places from different backgrounds culturally uh, and otherwise let's have a look uh, Aquarius and see what's in the 12th house for you 12th house I beg your pardon is also about um, the hidden it's about um, you know stuff that's you know um, beneath uh, the veil um, things that are not visible to you. These cards just keep coming out and I'm not, um, haven't even started yet. Angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides. What does Aquarius need to know about love in full moon in Capricorn? Okay, there's an offer. So you've got the Knight of Cups here. Knight of Cups is a new pathway. Okay, this is important to wear your heart on your sleeve and not um, be afraid. Okay, not be afraid to branch out, not be afraid to meet someone new, not be afraid to open up and tell someone how you really feel. Um, Knight of Cups for me is always about that sort of, you know, the knight in shining armor, but it can also be if you are meeting someone or dating someone at the moment, this person just really wants to tell you how they really feel. You might be putting up a block. You might be, you know, not letting somebody in. Um, but I'm telling you right now, there is something here that you just can't see at the moment and it's hidden in plain sight. So that's your card uh, for the love reading. Hope you enjoyed it, Aquarius. Next, we have Pisces. Pisces, uh, the full moon in uh, Capricorn is going to be sitting in your 11th house. This is the house where you're going to be socializing and getting out a little bit more, um, enjoying the fact that you're going to be surrounding yourself with love. You're going to be surrounding yourself with people who love you and also people who respect you. Okay. But the 11th house as well is, you know, maybe having to um, date, again, date multiple people. You're not actually just one on one with somebody. You're actually having to spread, you know, spread the love a little bit. Um, but let's see what the tarot has to say for the 11th house and this full moon in Capricorn for Pisces. Angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides. What love advice do we have for Pisces on the full moon in Capricorn? We've got three cards here. I'll take the first one. This is the Hermit. Know thyself. Understand who you really are, what you really want before you make any more, more moves. All right. This is the, the, the journey of uh, self-discovery. This is the journey of knowing who you are on the inside before you make any more further decisions about what needs, you know, what the next step is. I'm going to take the extra, extra two cards as well. You do have um, Nine of Pentacles here, which is Venus in Virgo. Uh, if you haven't met the right person just yet, another Virgo card. This is also about waiting for the one. This is also about knowing that you can support yourself. You don't need a person to look after you financially. You're financially independent. And then finally, you have the Empress, which is the card of the mother. Also a woman who's abundant. You know, uh, she's basically reaping what she sows. Uh, the Empress is ruled by Venus as well, which is also the planet of love. So in terms of love, Pisces, at the moment, you are a bit of a love bomb, but also you're also um, super independent. And this is these are both very divine feminine cards. Um, Virgo is also a feminine sign, but it's also ruled by Mercury. So be sure to communicate what you want properly within relationships. Know that financially, you know, you'll always have what you need. Um, but also this is also about maybe spending some more time in nature as well. You know, you might just be finding yourself with a bit too much screen time recently. Um, just bear that in mind. Uh, and then.
And that's it. So we've done Aries all the way around to Pisces. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this impromptu uh, love reading video. If you found it helpful, please give my video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, smash the subscribe button and the notification bell. Happy full moon uh, this Sunday, 21st of uh, July for full moon in Capricorn. I'll be releasing the Leo videos very shortly for the monthly readings. So stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.